الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Continuing on in our series for Ramadan uh, Some of the important manners and things we should try to observe and try to avoid during this holy month and also those things which entail ibadat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said when he defined ibadah he said ibadah kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min af'ali al-zahir wal batin that ibadah or worship is everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with from those things which are open and hidden. So open types of ibadah, of course, like the salat, uh, making hajj, umrah, uh, giving charity openly. Those kind of things are the vahir ibadah. Those are the, that's the type of worship which is which is open. And the hidden or concealed al batin worship, things like muhabba, like loving for the sake of Allah, isti'adha, istighatha, uh, you know, hoping and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, raja wa khawf, you know, having, hoping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment, and likewise. So today, in our series, I'd like to talk about muhabba, which is love. And love is also a type of ibadah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that He subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. In the law, yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu mutatahirin. Verily, Allah loves those who repent, who make repentance often, and those who are purified. In the law, ma sabirin. In the law, yuhibbu sabirin. Very Allah loves those people who are patient. So Allah loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. This is a characteristic, a divine characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his divine attributes. And the creation, uh, us as created beings, we love as well. But our love is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. So this is what's a very important and where the uh, Asha'ira and other sects that some of them, they make a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine characteristics and the creation's uh, characteristics. Or they negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's characteristics trying to flee from res making resemblance between the creator's attributes and the creation's attributes. But Ahlul Sunnah is in the middle. Ahlul Sunnah says, yes, Allah loves and possesses the attribute of love, and we as creatures possess the attribute of love. But our love is limited. Our love is imperfect. Our love uh, is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. And we don't know the kafiya. We know that Allah really loves, but we don't know how He loves. We do not know the details, for example, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, divine attributes. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yanzalu Rabbana tabarakahu ta'ala kuluthulutha layla al-akhir. That... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last third of the night, and this is very important for us during the month of Ramadan and other than the month of Ramadan, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven in the last third of the night. So, this is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He descends. Yes, Allah descends. And the creation, we descend as well. We can descend from the chair. We, you know, we can come down, descend down the mountain, whatever. But however, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's descending is not like our descending. We don't make a uh, comparison with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that anything is uh, resembles him. But he also affirms that he is the all hearing and all seeing. And his creation hears and sees. Letting us know that we affirm as Ahlul Sunnah the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran. If Allah says He loves, we say Allah loves. 
The Bible says he descends or that he rose above his throne. We say he rose above his throne and we leave it like that. We don't try to ask the kafir how he does it, but we affirm it. And if the Prophet Sallallahu says that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala yanzulu rabbana tabarak wa ta'ala kulu thuluth al al that Allah descends the low, to the lowest heaven uh, the, during the last third of the night, then we say Allah descends to the lowest heaven the last third of the night in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't know how, but he subhanahu wa ta'ala does it because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not lie. This is the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah. So going back to the important thing, Allah loves and we love, but our love is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa qala ta'ala, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبٍ لِلَّهِ In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who believe, they love Allah more. You know, they have an excessive love for Allah. This is the attribute we want. We want to love Allah more than anything in this dunya. Then we're not care. We don't care. Think about the characteristics of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people who are like the, uh, they often translate as saints or the righteous, the salihin. They have certain attributes that Allah describes them in the, in the Quran that they uh, do not fear the blame of the blamer. This is one of their characteristics. You know, that they are patient and, and, and so forth. So we want to be like that, those people, because those people are loved by Allah. So it's not, as the Salaf used to say, it's not an issue of just having, uh, just loving Allah, but it's having Allah love you. This is where a lot of the extreme Sufis go astray. And I have to point these issues of creed out because this is from the creed and the minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Is that you find groups of people who say, we love Allah so much. We make dhikr until slobber comes out of our mouth. We make dhikr and we cry. And crying, this is a beautiful trait of the believer. Crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repenting and making dhikr to Allah. That's not what we're uh, negating or, or, or criticizing. Well, we're criticizing the people who go other than the Sharia in their dhikr. They uh, turn off the lights, they maybe hold hands, they dance they, like the whirling dervishes, they, and they believe that this is a type of dhikr bringing them closer to Allah. Yes, they experience a euphoria, because if I was dancing 24 hours to the greatest jams that I used to like, then I would probably be kind of feeling a little lightheaded too, and thinking I was closer to my Lord. And in fact, we used to think like this. We used to think, you know, that magical feeling when you come into the concert, or especially if you are a performer, for those who are performers, you had a certain kind of feeling, you were nervous, you had the microphone, you're singing, you're rapping, you're doing whatever, and you felt that kind of, you know, that, that, that feeling, or there's thousands of other people doing the same thing, you felt that feeling, but that's not the feeling that is bringing you closer to Allah. Just because you feel something doesn't mean you're doing the right thing. It doesn't mean you're coming closer to Allah. And that's the important thing with dhikr and, and having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you. And the only way you can do that is by following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa That's the only way. That's the only way. And there's ample nusus from kitab wa sunnah to illustrate for us that. So again, the issue is not that you love Allah. That's one part of it. But you want Allah to love you. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ And here Allah says, and He loves them, and they love Him. This is the shan, this is what the believer, this is a characteristic of the believer, that they love Allah, and that Allah loves them. That's the characteristic of the awliya of Allah. May Allah bless us to be of them. Because we want to be of those people who don't just say on our lips, we love Allah, but we want Allah to love us and to protect us. Because the, the, those Sadaheen, they're protected by Allah. They're the only of Allah. They don't care what the people say. The people are criticizing them. The people have new reputations against them. The people hate them. Even some of the people hate them. Some of the people want to kill them. This is the case. Look at the NBA. All the uh, NBA, Nehem, Afdal, Salatu, Salam. People killed some of the prophets. People tried to kill the Prophet, Salatu, Salam. They poisoned him. People tried to, you know, they tried to kill uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. They tried to kill uh, uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Fir'aun wa ghayr dhalik. This is the shan of the of, of the uh, NBA. This is the state of the affairs of the uh, prophets alayhim afwa salatu wasalam. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless us to be loved and bless us bless us to be of the salihin. Those those people are righteous. 
And in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a hadith of Anas radiyallahu taala anhu, قال ثلاث من كن فيه وجد حلاوة الإيمان أن يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواهما سواهما وأن يحب المرأة المرأة لا يحبه إلا لله وأن يقرأ أن يعود في الكفر كما يقرأ أن يقذف في النار رواه شيخان من متفق عليه إن بخاري المسلم يفعل الحديث in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said three people have tasted the the sweetness of faith. The first one is the one who loves Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. More than anything else, nothing else is comparable to their love for Allah and love for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. May Allah bless us to be of those people who taste. The halawat al iman. Ameen. And that they love a person strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a beautiful thing that we learn this in Islam. Where you love a person not because they're your color, not because he's of uh, 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 your, your gang, your, 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 uh, your sect, not because he's your, uh, uh, from your tribe or from your kinfolk, or not because they're from your nationality in your country, or all those other things that people tend to unite and love and strive based upon. But rather loving for the sake of Allah. This person in before Islam you would have not even maybe you might have been enemies before Islam. This might have this one might have been in a gang and this one might have been in a rival gang. And I've met brothers like this. And they loved each other for the sake of Allah. Allah united them. This one was a blood, this one was a crib. Now they left that and they love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This one was a white lawyer, conservative. And this one was a brother off the street, African American. And they loved one another. Or vice versa. This one is a well educated brother in the college. And this is a, uh, a brother off the street who's been through the struggle, various struggles. And they love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This one is from China. He don't, we don't even know. We can't even communicate with him. But we love him for the sake of Allah because he loves Allah and his messenger. He's a Muslim. And he loves Allah wa Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the strongest bond. Hub fillah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it's one of the, those are the people who taste the halawat al iman, the sweetness of faith. And the third characteristic is the one who hates to return to kufr. Wa'iyadu billah min dhalika. And as I mentioned, even recently it's come to me, and it's that it, that a particular brother been Muslim for 15, 16 years and he apostated. Wa'iyadu billah. This is something gharib. And it shows me, it shows the danger of, you know, getting into shubahat. Be careful of the internet. Be careful of looking into the internet unless you're using it for good. And when you're using it for good, make sure that you're taking your knowledge from sound sources. From people who call to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Minhaj of the Salaf Asadi, and that they're, when they translate and so forth, they give you pearls from the major scholars, especially in this time and age, if they're telling, talking to you about Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan, they're talking to you about uh, what Bin Uthaymeen said, what Al Albani said, what Muqbil bin Hadi al said, what uh, uh, Bin Baz said, and, and scholars like this, then, then you can you can rest assured and you can be safe because these are imams of the sunnah in our time that that no matter what those people who dislike them say these people bore the black the, the flag of the sunnah so we want to be like them and want to push out their knowledge and you can be safe when you return when you compare what you hear to what they say if you see a contradiction leave what what contradicts that because those imams are flag bearers of the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this time Going back to the point, those are the characteristics of the people who have tasted the sweetness of faith. And Fimunasib, also I want to mention another particular thing related to that last part of that hadith, is that the person who hates to return to disbelief, similar to the way they hate to be in the hellfire, that this is a characteristic of the sweetness of faith. And 
also we must make du'a and we must make da'wah the law if we have the, uh, 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 the, the ability to do so. If we have some knowledge, share what you have knowledge to the extent that you have that knowledge. Don't go beyond that extent and talk about things you have no knowledge about. But talk about those things that you have knowledge about and share that. Because many of our brothers and sisters, for example, uh, in Indonesia, they're leaving Islam by the hordes. Why? Because they're weak in knowledge and they're weak in istiqamah. You know, there you'll find many people listening to grunge, many people taking ecstasy, many people doing the things that we used to do in the West. They're doing it even more so. Big rave parties and stuff. So they're easy to get. And the Christians are going there offering them the Bible, offering them uh, a new way of life, and deceiving them, saying, hey, Jesus loves you. Look, we're smiling. Look at those Muslims. They're doing this and they're doing that. You know, come on. And the people are accepting this. So we ask Allah to bless us with all of us with a class with the bat. You know, to with firmness on his religion. And firmness on the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bless us to be of those who are loved. The different types of muhabba. We'll briefly go over the different types of muhabba or love. There's muhabba alati hiya ibadatillah. There's the love which is ibadah. And this muhabba, and it's the ibadah, ibadatillah, meaning that the love which is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is worship. This is the muhabba we want to possess. This muhabba has to do with our hearts and our limbs, of course. But in our hearts, it means that you have a, a, a fear and you have a love and a humility and a humbleness that only belongs to Allah. For example, if you fear, for example, being harmed, you're in a street, a dark street, you see some... some youth there, they, they look shady, you're fearful of them. That's a natural type of fear. You fear for your life. You fear you're walking in the in the jungle or, or you're taking a hike, you see a grizzly bear, you see a cougar. This is a natural fear. But the fear when you're in the, in the depths of the night and you've committed a sin or you haven't even committed a sin, but you're fearing the punishment of Allah for all of your shortcomings, that only belongs to Allah. That doesn't belong to the only of Allah. You don't say, oh, I fear the Prophet ﷺ like this. Or I fear uh, Saint so-and-so or uh, Wali so-and-so, my Sufi Sheikh. I, I, I look at his picture and I cry and I, and, I, and I fear him and I love him. No. That is ghayr mishroor. We don't have that in Islam. That's what some of those other religions that contain shirk and polytheism can possess that. But this kind of love only belongs to Allah. It doesn't, it's not to your marid. It's not to your Sufi Imam. It's not to your Sheikh. It's not to your whatever. Your mentor or your, your the saint. The saint that's dead in the grave. He cannot harm you. Don't be fearful of Abdul Qadir Jailani or Tijani or this one who's the, the Sheikh of the Naqshbandi creed. This one, this one. Abdullah bin Hadi of the, the uh, Habashi order. This one, this one. Or the Masons. No. Those are cult traits. They're not from Islam. Islam, that muhabba is to Allah. And labud, that means you must have that to be really loving Allah. You must have that fear and that humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type of muhabba is muhabba fillah. And this is the love for the sake of Allah. And as we mentioned, loving someone strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or loving ibadat like salat and zakat. Loving uh, Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Loving the righteous. Loving them. That's nothing wrong with loving the righteous. Loving the scholars, those and, and those people who are practicing Islam strongly. Those people before, even the saints and the scholars who, who died before. Nothing wrong with that. But it should not reach to the point of ibadah. You love them for the sake of Allah. You benefit from their knowledge. You benefit from the stories you hear about them and how righteous they were. But you don't. Uh, uh, and you can supplicate and ask for the, Allah to have mercy upon them and stuff. But you don't worship them. You don't fear them. That's for reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the muhabba fillah. The third type of muhabba is muhabba ma'Allah. Muhabba ma'Allah. This is the, the muhabba that the mushrikeen have. That they love Allah and they love their idols. Okay? When you're sharing love, that love of ibadah with Allah and other than Allah, then this is shirk. And that is madhmoon. That is not permissible in Islam. The fourth type of muhabba, muhabba tukun ma'asiyyati lillah, wala tukun shirkin. Right, this is the level, this is the kind of muhabba. When you love for the person who loves Allah, 
but they also love sinfulness. The person who loves Allah, but they love pornography. The person who loves Allah, but they love drinking alcohol. The, the person who loves Allah, but they love going to the club. The person who loves Allah, but they love listening to music. They can't get away from reminiscing on Tupac and, and, and 50 Cent or whoever else they, they like. This is the muhabba, the love for Allah, but they also have some love for Ma'asi. And it's difficult for them to, to leave that. So they have to strive to leave that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They involve themselves in some of the Ma'asi. And this person is sinful, and it takes away from their love from Allah. Allah. That means their love is naqis. It, it, it has some deficiency. Because true, full love for Allah then they will leave that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, so that shows us that our love is on different levels, like our iman is on different levels. Our iman fluctuates, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. And different people, their iman is on different levels. Uh, and the fifth type of muhabba is muhabba tabi'iyya, and we talked a little bit about it, tabi'iyya. And this is the love, this is the natural love. For example, the way we love our parents, the way we love our children, the way we love uh, our wives and our husbands, the way we love, uh, you know, just having a, maybe even a, a general love for for other human beings, okay, for the love for life. This is a natural love. The love and the mercy for an animal. You see a, a baby kitten out there, and you have a love for it. You don't want it to be harmed, so you, you try to get it out of harm's way. All of this is a natural love. That we have, you may, you have these natural aspects of love, and so you you just have to put it in perspective that the natural love should never in, overtake the Sharia love. Meaning, for example, if we have non-Muslim uh, parents or non-Muslim family members, we love them, but our love does not supersede the love for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we will not do sinful th things just because. We love them because they order us to do sinful things. So that is impermissible in Islam. And that is can be a type of shirk depending on how it is uh, uh, implemented. So we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us and bless us to be of those who are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah help the Muslims everywhere, our brothers and sisters in Burma. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in China and our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia and our brothers and sisters in Somalia and our brothers and sisters in Iraq and Afghanistan with Chechnya and wherever they may be suffering and our brothers and sisters in America and, 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 and in other lands where there are minorities and where they're ex experiencing legislation that is oppressing them and experiencing raci uh, racism and discrimination and stereotyping and being imprisoned unlawfully and spied upon. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of the awliya, those people who are loved by Allah, who are not even fearful of that. That, hey, oh, you put me on the no-fly list? I'm not afraid of that. Oh, you want to put me in prison falsely for no reason? Just because I'm, uh, because of my color and because of my religion. I'm, I'm a Muslim. Well, okay. To walk Allah Allah. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and bless us be of those people who are not fearful of that. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.